coming up tonight on the News at 5. How a new Montana law will significantly change the concealed carry of guns in our state. Plus, why the Great Falls Adult Education Program is being recognized nationally. From Montana's news leader, this is MTN News at 5. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the News at 5. I'm Andy Curtis, and thanks for joining us. On Thursday, Governor Greg Gianforte signed House Bill 102 into law, which will significantly change the concealed carry of guns here in Montana. HB 102 will now allow people to carry concealed firearms without a permit in most locations and with a permit in state and local government buildings, such as the state capitol building. The new law will also limit how college administrators can regulate guns on campus not being able to outright ban concealed carry. Those with concealed carry permits will now be able to carry in bars, casinos, and restaurants, and financial institutions like banks. Banks, although private properties can set their own restrictions. K through 12 school boards will also be able to impose limitations in their buildings. School changes from HB 102 won't go into effect until June 1st, all other concealed carry changes go into effect immediately. And in Montana cities with booming real estate and rental markets, some landlords and property management companies are charging a fee to any renter who wants to be considered or to anyone who wants to look inside one of their properties. A state senator from Bozeman says that the practice has gotten out of hand and she has a bill to rein it back in. MTN's Mike Dennison has more. Senator J.P. Pomnikowski says she began hearing last year from constituents in Bozeman's expensive and tight rental market about substantial charges for applying to rent or view an apartment or house. One woman told Pomnikowski that a management firm asked $100 just to allow her to look at the interior of a house she wanted to consider renting, $25 per roommate. When the woman asked if one person could view the house for $25, she was told no, that the fee was charged for each person who might live there. Pomnikowski told MTN News that she understands property managers have costs in processing some applications, but that customers should be charged only for those costs. I'm not opposed to the idea of collecting a fee to do something like a credit check on a renter or something like that, but to charge a fee for the right to put in an application, I just think that is a vast overreach. So Pomnikowski has introduced Senate Bill 241, which, if passed, would require landlords who charge these fees to return them to anyone who does not end up as the renter. Landlords or property management companies would be allowed to deduct any specific costs identified in writing in advance and actually performed. But a lobbyist for the Montana Landlords Association says he'll be opposing the bill when it comes up for a hearing next Tuesday at the Senate Business and Labor Committee. John Sinrud says landlords incur costs when reviewing rental applications and should be able to charge to cover those costs. He called the bill ridiculous and cumbersome. Pomnikowski says she believes some companies and landlords are taking advantage of tight markets to use application fees as a source of revenue, which she called an unfair housing practice. My goal here is to just stop this practice. And so my hope is that um, landlords and property management companies Stop charging someone for the privilege of turning in an application. Reporting from Helena, Mike Dennison, MTN News. The hearing begins next Tuesday at 9 a.m. and the public can testify in person at the Capitol or via Zoom by signing up 24 hours in advance on the legislator's website. And a legislative budget panel voted Thursday to authorize another $27 million in federal money to be used for emergency rental assistance for Montanans during the COVID-19 pandemic. The bipartisan budget subcommittee said the money will be inserted into a yet to be introduced bill. If approved by the full legislature, the money would augment $17 million that's already been authorized for the program. The State Department of Commerce is planning an aggressive push for making the money available to Montanans having trouble paying their rents because of job loss during the pandemic. The $44 million total is part of $200 million in federal funds approved by Congress in December and allocated to Montana for emergency rental assistance. State housing officials estimate the $44 million could be distributed to as many as 8,000 households by the end of June. Renters and their landlords can apply for the money. 
The State Commerce Department has set up a website where people can inquire at emergencyrentalassistance.mt.gov, and we'll have that website on our website, ktvh.com. All right, now with a look at our weather, Chief Meteorologist Curtis Grevenance. Well, good afternoon, Andy. Good afternoon, everybody. A live look up at East Glacier here. A little sun glare, but we do have some blowing snow, especially up on the mountain. You see that uh, texture right there. That's some blowing snow, but also turn the camera around and uh, we're looking now off towards the east. And yeah, it's pretty hard to see in between East Glacier and Browning right now. And uh, this is just the tip of the iceberg, so to speak, as blowing snow will be an issue everywhere where you see this winter weather advisory uh, that will go through tonight, through most of tomorrow, all the way until 11 o'clock. Beyond that, a high wind watch. This really for Sunday, Sunday night, and Monday for those same areas. Forecast headlines of public enemy number one over the next few days will be the wind and the problem is blowing snow here for a lot of the state. A lot of Montana has snow on the ground and if you're hoping for one of those spring flings temperature wise uh, where at the end of February you can kind of expect to maybe see a, a 50 or a 60 degree day. Well, it doesn't really look like we warm up anytime soon. More on the full forecast coming up. We've received several questions from viewers today following yesterday's Cascade City County Board of Health meeting. So we want to take a minute to clear some up uh, some of the confusion up. The County Health Department had said that mandates would be removed if COVID cases dropped below 25 per 100,000 people. Well, Wednesday we did meet that mark, but the Health Department says that was not referring to masks. The case rate was tied to um, occupancy and hours of operation, not the mask mandate. The mask mandate was tied to the governor's recommendations as we had had it stated previously. Now the health department did place Cascade County under a mask mandate Wednesday. This comes in response to the governor ending the state's mask mandate last week. And active cases of COVID-19 in the state continue to hold steady, sitting just over 2,500. Just over 200 additional COVID-19 cases were reported in Montana today. Active hospitalizations rose and right now are sitting at 109 people hospitalized with the virus. And five deaths were also reported today, bringing the statewide death total to 1,349. And it's important to remember that MTN uses a combination of state and local data to report COVID-19 cases and deaths across the state. And we now know the identities of the two fishermen who died after falling through the ice on the Marias River in Toole County last week. The Toole County coroner has identified them as 43-year-old Jared Russell and 40-year-old Jared Kirschenhither. Russell is from Missoula and Kirschenhither is from Clinton. Their bodies were recovered on Tuesday. As we reported, the Toole County Sheriff's Office says they were driving a UTV to visit some other fishermen near their camp on the river when the UTV fell through the ice. And Montana's Securities and Insurance Commissioner is reminding you to make sure you're prepared for potential flooding. In a news release earlier today, the commissioner said the recent snow across the state and ice on the rivers and lakes makes now a good time to think about preparing. The snow and ice melt can cause flooding and flood insurance is not always included in standard home insurance policies and typically doesn't start until 30 days after you get it. We saw about $600,000 in flood premium written in Montana uh, last year. And uh, my belief is, is that we're undercovered for flood, uh, for flood risk. And the message that I wanna get out there is that Montana consumers should look seriously at what their risk is. You can find a link to the flood preparation tips and more uh, information on this story up on our website. And a local adult education program is receiving some national recognition. MTN's Coulter Anstat tells us why the program held at Great Falls College MSU is being recognized and what this means for the program. This class is definitely a blessing. Sydney Hess is a student in Connections 101. The class is meant to help prepare adults for college, an apprenticeship, short-term training programs, or a job. Going through life, I have never really known how to get into college. 
Connections 101 is one of five programs nationwide that have just been recognized as an innovative practice in adult education by the Advancing Innovation in Adult Education Project. The project is funded by the U.S. Department of Education. It's saying here's a model, it works, it works fantastically. Tammy Hickey is the coordinator for the Career and College Readiness Center at Great Falls College, MSU. She submitted the application for the national recognition. It's very cool to think that um, other in other states, other adult ed programs, other community colleges, other workforce partners can look at this and say, let's try this. Like Hess, students Israel McConnell, Joseph Drummond, and John Brady would agree it's a model worth trying. I've been in adult ed here for like a while since I was 17, and the teachers have been the best teachers I've ever worked with. I'm kind of just seeing what I'm capable of doing and learning that, you know, I'm maybe a little bit more intelligent than I thought. I dropped out in 2017, and I didn't think I was going to go back, you know, go back to school. I just, you know, work. But, yeah, just like coming here, the teachers, you know, having confidence in me, it, it's like a great feeling. In Great Falls, Coulter Anstad, MTN News. Well, when we come back, Chief Meteorologist Curtis Grevenance will have a complete check of your forecast. And later, should you be in a hurry or wait to file your taxes? Our Joe St. George breaks it all down. Tracker weather starts now with Chief Meteorologist Curtis Grevenance. All right, welcome back, everybody. What a beautiful winter's day it uh, has been here across most of the state, uh, with the exception of a few windy spots on the Rocky Mountain front around East Glacier. But Denton, one of the places under a winter weather advisory, one of the places where blowing snow will be an issue over the next few days. The Rocky Mountain front, places like Shoto and Augusta, Depuyer, uh, and Pendroy, of course, uh, looking at some pretty nasty conditions developing. Highway 200, uh, Bowman's Corner, think that uh, heading up to Great Falls will also be dealing with some blowing snow over the next few days. And uh, this vantage point from guys who are looking back at the high woods again, what a pretty, pretty day it has been. But uh, this is another location that'll be looking at some blowing snow and is under a winter weather advisory. Great Falls in that winter weather advisory. 22 degrees right now. Feels like 11. Helena, clouds moving in quickly. 21 degrees right now with a light east wind at 3 miles per hour. It'll take a little longer for that wind to get down into Helena, but teens and 20s was a chilly day with temperatures 10 to 15 degrees below normal here, but still with that sunshine. And then after last week's cold, it was really a nice day. And the wind, not too bad right now, but around East Glacier and Browning, we've got some wind gusts up to about 45 miles per hour. So through tonight, tomorrow, the Rocky Mountain Front, Interstate 15, down there into parts of Judith Basin County through Cascade County. That's where we'll have uh, the wind through a lot of the day. You can see some of that wind right there and then right along the Rocky Mountain Front into northern parts of Lewis and Clark County. So those usual places that get the strong wind, we'll be looking at some pretty strong wind for tomorrow. Uh, we'll get into some wind speeds coming up here in just a second. A little break here Friday night into Saturday. Saturday will be a breezy day for a lot of the state, but we're not really getting into the 50, 60, 70, 80 mile per hour winds uh, just yet. But through tonight, tomorrow, Gusts right along the East Glacier area here and then also right along the Rocky Mountain front. We could have some gusts to 55 miles per hour, uh, 65 miles per hour, 55 closer to Interstate 15. And then also some gusts up to 55 miles per hour in Cascade and Judith Basin counties. That will blow that snow around. Now, a high wind watch has also been issued really for later Saturday, Sunday into Monday for that same area. So the wind gets stronger as we go through the weekend into next week. On the radar, yeah, a little snow starting to move in across uh, the border of Washington and Idaho here. Uh, that uh, system kind of favors west of the divide for snow, and we've got some snow into the eastern part of the country. And finally, the snow is over with, uh, really, for a lot of Texas, but they've got a couple of more days of some pretty chilly stuff here. But uh, for Montana, some snow showers coming through tonight into tomorrow. And there may be a few flurries up across the north central part of the state. Most of the snow, though, will be in the mountains. Tomorrow, it's a mostly sunny day east of the mountains, but that wind will be blowing and drifting that snow around. And then heading into uh, Saturday, looking at some snow down closer to Bozeman and Livingston, 
Some snow showers in the mountains on Saturday, but that wind will once again be an issue. Snowfall amounts heaviest in the mountains, not so much into the uh, lower elevations, at least uh, for north central Montana. Tonight, single digits and teens and a few spots dealing with some wind. You'll have places like uh, around the Nyhard area and up through Monarch could be looking at some wind and tomorrow. It's a windy day across the north central part of the state. A lot of sunshine out there as well. Some snow showers over the little belts and down the continental divide. Here's a seven day forecast for Helena. So a few snow showers in the mountains. A couple could come down into Helena here over the next few days. 50 on Monday, but some colder air will work its way back in Wednesday and Thursday. The wind should hold off until late on Sunday in Helena and Fort Great Falls get ready for some of that hellacious wind really moving in Sunday, Sunday night into Monday. Could filing your taxes impact your next stimulus check? The answer depends on how much you earned last year. Our Joe St. George walks you through why you should wait or why you should file right now. The IRS officially started accepting tax returns on February 12th. Like most years, you have until April 15th to file your taxes. But should you wait or be in a hurry to file your taxes this year? Well, in short, the answer depends on how much you earned last year, but you should pay attention with the prospect of more stimulus checks on the horizon. After all, the Internal Revenue Service, the IRS, uses your most recent tax filing to determine if you should receive a stimulus check. Scenario number one, you earned less in 2020 than you did in 2019. The answer, file as soon as possible. That's because Congress is debating the next round of stimulus checks right now. And the less you earn, the more likely you'll get a full stimulus check. Previously, Americans earning less than $75,000 a year received a full amount, but that number could drop to $50,000 in the next round of payments. Scenario number two, you earned more in 2020 than you did in 2019. The answer is, well, you may benefit from waiting. That's because your higher income could prevent you from getting another stimulus check. Scenario number three, you earned the same in 2019 and 2020. The answer, file when you want, as it won't impact your chances of getting another stimulus check. And scenario number four, you never received previous stimulus checks, but no, you qualify. The answer, file as soon as possible. The IRS is asking that question when you file this year and crediting Americans who should have received those checks. But you are to some degree racing against the clock. President Biden wants to have signed into law a new stimulus check bill by mid-March. In Washington, I'm Joe St. George. Well, coming up next on the News at 5, the Helena High Science Circus will, of course, look a little different this year. But don't worry about it. The students are bringing the circus to you. From Montana's news leader, you're watching MTN News at 5. Welcome back, everyone. COVID has changed or canceled countless events over the past year. In order to avoid cancellation for a second time, the annual Helena High School Science Circus has moved to an online platform this time around, and the students say they're bringing the circus to you. MTN's Jessica Nelson explains. The Helena High School Science Circus has been around for more than three decades, and this year's seniors were not going to let the pandemic ruin the beloved event. So we also started brainstorming and the, just the best idea was science kits that kids can do kind of have science circus in their own home. So instead of holding a two day hands on science circus at the school where hundreds of people would attend, the students adapted. And that kind of just gives you a little brief par paragraph about like what you what I just told you really is how because of COVID we couldn't do it. So we thought it would be best to bring it into your homes. And then it said any order can be from February 8th to March 8th. Not only did the science seminar students at Helena High build this website for easy access, they also put together each kit. And we have eight kits, and so it shows you a picture. So we got a crystal clear where you can make some crystals, like a little lava lamp you can make, and then butterfly magnets, homemade Play-Doh, micro vol volcanoes, uh, moose or elephant toothpaste, and then a trace fossil kit or a tornado in a bottle. Each kit costs $10 and can be purchased on the website and then picked up at the school on one of the four weekends in March. Reporting in Helena, Jessica Nelson, MTN News. We'll wrap things up here when we come back, but first here's a look at what's coming up tonight on the NBC Nightly News. 
When we welcome our West Coast viewers, the Texas power grid disaster foretold the lessons for other states as Texans face a new crisis tonight. Also, will a third vaccine dose be required as new coronavirus variants take hold? What the head of Pfizer says when we see you back here tonight. From Montana's news leader, you're watching MTN News at 5. Again, for making us a part of your evening, NBC Nightly News is next, and then you can catch us right back here at 6 and 10 and always online at KTVH.com. Have a great and safe rest of your night.